Wondering what's next in your business or personal life? Welcome to Success to Significance, Life After Breaking Through Glass Ceilings, a podcast dedicated to helping you with all of life's challenges, discoveries, and opportunities. Whether you're seeking a new career, retirement, or simply wanting to make an impact in your community or the world, join Jen Duplessis and her guests as they explore how to start, what to do when you're in the thick of a change or growth, and how to leave a mark in this world after breaking through your next achievement. You are moments away from the aha you've been seeking. Hello, and welcome back to this episode. Today, my guest is known as the Badass Direct Sales Master. <laughs> and I don't even know if you know that you you call yourself but that, that but um, I'd like to introduce uh, Jenny Bellinger to the show. Welcome to the show, Jenny. Thanks for having me, Jen. I so appreciate it. Of course. You know, I love, I love sharing, you know, on occasion, like how we meet, you know, so often in podcasting, you know, we are, we meet through, you know, some service or, you know, maybe we're speaking on stages together, but you and I had the opportunity to meet on the marketers cruise, which I think is so fun. Um, so we'll have some information on the li uh, link below here as well in the show notes on the marketers cruise. If you have interest in going to that as well, um, because, uh, you know, it's 450 of us getting together. And as Captain Lou always says, the best ships are friendships, right? Yes. <laughs> he says that all the time. So I'm really excited uh, to have you here today. And you know, being um, the direct sale, you know, being a direct sales mastery person, I think one of the things that people want to talk, want to hear is what exactly is uh, direct sales. But before we get to that, because I do want to talk about, I mean, we, I know what direct sales is, but some people may think it's a um, uh, multimedia, multi-level marketing. Some may say it's, you know, who knows, who knows? So I want your definition of it. Sure. But before we get into that, you know, what makes you the expert in this field? Absolutely. So I've been in the industry since 2010. I ran a, a business in the direct sales industry for seven full years of my own. And actually during that time earned nine trips, multiple car bonuses, cash bonuses with commas in them. And the, the thing that I'm most proud of is that my team ended up being number one in the world in group growth and number three wow. in the world in group sales. Um, and that all happened in this in the same year in the same convention, which is really unusual. Most teams will only hit one or the other, but not both. So my wow. my amazing team did a great job with that. So and I've, you know, I've I've been in the industry and, and I do work with people who are in direct sales. I work with people who are in network marketing and I work with people who are in multi-level marketing because those are actually three different oh, yeah. uh, definitions within a, a similar industry. Yeah. So yeah, that that's always a, a fun <laughs> conversation right. to have to try and explain those to people. Yeah, I know. Well, because I think yeah, yeah. it's just up for interpretation, you know, it's, um, it's, you know, aircraft, airplane, plane, it's all the same thing, right? But everybody uses different yeah. words, you know, that are associated <laughs> with that. And I know that one of your, yeah. you know, one of the things that you really focus on is helping sales, you know, generally for people, um, team building, right? This is something that I work on quite a bit is team building and leadership as well. Um, but in direct sales, it's a little different because that leadership grows or that team grows as they sell. Um, the type of, you know, team building and leadership I do is that I'm growing and I'm hiring people to support me, right? There's right. a little bit of a difference there. Yeah. But, um, you know, I think that, you know, in industry as a whole, uh, and I, I love talking about this topic. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of examples and then maybe you can sp speak to this because I know you've got a, um, a portion of what you talk about, which is no product, no puking pitch, not yeah. nothing, right? Show up and throw up. And this is <laughs> so, this is so common for salespeople, business people, entrepreneurs, you know, is that it's all about me. It's all about that. And so when we talk about networking, one of the things that drives me nuts more than anything is when we get on a call, hi, I want to have a meeting with you to get to know you and see how I can help your business. And then the first thing out of their mouth is pitching, pitching to me. And that's, you know, malpractice in my opinion, but don't pitch me without knowing what I need or what I think I need. I don't even know if I need. Um, so tell us a little bit about 
networking. Let's not talk about the sales presentation itself, but a little bit about networking because um, who are you with, by the way? I better say who it is before I, I start. Yeah, the the company that I was uh, active with for seven years uh, is Park Lane Jewelry. Okay, so got it. I was, yep, I was with them through 2017. And then when I went full-time coaching that year, I stepped away from my team because I knew that this was my calling. So yeah. 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 Okay. The reason why I say that is I always, always use the example of Mary Kay. Um, yeah. <laughs> I just want to make sure I wasn't hurting anybody. So, um, you know, whenever I go to networking and there's a Mary Kay lady there or something similar, all they want is, Hey, you want to have a party? You want to have a party? Let's have a party. You want to have a party here? Here's a sample. Do you want to have a party? You know, can you imagine what I do now is like, Hey, do you want to buy my coaching? It's 30 grand. You want to buy my coaching? <laughs> come on, buy my coaching. It's 30 grand. Come on, right. come on, come on, come on, come on. Yep. Right. Or when I was in lending, you know, imagine going up and say, Hey, give me your credit score or your credit report. Come on, come on, come on. Give me your social security number. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. And, and it just seems really funny in that context, but it's no different. And it's one of the things, you know, that I call them skunks, right? Mm -hmm. People like that who come to market or come to networking are skunks. You're just like, Ooh, right. Mm -hmm. And then there are the squirrels, right? The squirrels that just gather business cards because they're going to drive you nuts afterwards, right? They're hunt, they're gatherers of nuts. So talk to us a little bit about your perspective on networking for, for the person who's listening here, who's a salesperson, an entrepreneur, you know, what do they need to know about networking first? It, it's all about relationship, right? Mm -hmm. It's, when you're going out and trying to treat a networking event like it like you're a poker dealer and you're throwing your cards out as quickly as you possibly can or trying to sell to people right there in the room it, it's never going to work because everyone else there no one shows up to a networking event going i'm going to buy from somebody today Right. No, but nobody, nobody does that. Right. People show up because they're all trying to sell to each other. So right. the that's really the thing. Effective, yeah. The really effective networkers, though, are the ones who show up and say, let me get to know you. What do you do? Who do you serve? And how can I connect you to maybe someone else who's here in the room who I know? Um, or I can connect you to someone in my network yeah. who might be a good fit for you either by client or because they work with a similar type of client. Cause I've been networking since 2012 or sorry, 2011. And, um, for me, I, I'm always trying to find the golden geese for mm -hmm. other people because sorry, but I don't want to try and find everybody their clients. That's a lot of freaking work. But if I can introduce them to somebody who has a whole slew of that person's clients in their network and right. vice versa. Heck yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to put the two of them together and say, Hey, you guys go have fun working together. And you yeah. Know. Um, yeah. And so networking should really be about building the relationship, getting to know people, asking questions, be insanely curious yeah. about the other person mm -hmm. sitting next to you um or standing next to you at the at the bar or you know at the the cocktail table or the appetizer table wherever you happen to be if it's a a, a happy hour networking event right so just get insanely curious about people and see how that changes your networking um life because it it just people become more attracted to you because you are interesting because you are interested yeah yeah, absolutely. And we've heard we've heard that before. So why why do people not do that? Why? I mean, if everybody knows, you know, be more curious, be more interesting and, you know, be interested in other people. Why is it because I hear it all the time? I hear, you know, oh, yeah, I don't do networking because I didn't I didn't make any money. I didn't get any business from it. And I always say, look, you're not there to get business. You're there to identify potential partners that you then can get business from, or they can, you know, as you said, in the case of the golden geese, they can refer you to somebody who's a fishing pole. And then you have a fleet of fishermen looking for you. Um, so, so what do you say to that person? Do you have a technique? Do you have a strategy that, Hey, right before I walk in and take a deep breath and go, it's not about me, <laughs> right? What is it I should be yeah. doing, you know, to trigger myself yeah, as I'm well, walking in the door? It, for me, what I do is I, I set a goal for how many connections I'm going to make. Mm -hmm. And 
that to me, it could be a connection for myself. It could be a connection for, for other people there in the room. Cause I'm, you know, whenever I go to a networking event, I try and do my homework beforehand and say, who's, you know, I reach out to the person who's organizing it and I ask them who's going to be there. Yeah. Um, who do they yeah. know is coming? And so that way I am hopefully showing up ready to meet some new people, but also know that there's going to be some people who I've met before at, at other events or maybe mm -hmm. at the same event last quarter or last year um, to reconnect with them. So I'm setting that goal to say, okay, I want to make five connections today. So introducing two, you know, two other people who don't know each other, who might need to know each other. But then I also set the goal to go in and help the host of the networking event. How can I help them put on a great event and how, you know, what do they need? Because oftentimes, you know, people are asking of things of that host and I'm saying, what can I take off your plate so you can go do, go be the host you want to be. So I show up to serve and then from that, it ends up bringing me more connections uh, because then the the host is like, oh my gosh, that Jenny. Did, did you meet she... so-and-so? Did you meet so-and-so? I need to introduce you. Yeah. Yeah, right. totally. I, I totally get that. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's really powerful. And I think, you know, if we, I mean, intentions, everything, I have a card in front of me every day that says intention is everything. And uh, you know, so if you go in saying, look, I want to make three connections, either I'm going to connect three people, I'm going to connect, you know, they're going to connect me with people. I want to make those connections. Um, and it's not about, you know, the opportunity and you may stumble across one and that's a win. That's a, just a bonus rather than, you know, going there to actually do that. Okay. So let's say, so we went to this, uh, event and we got a couple connections and now we need to follow up. Well, let's first yeah. address the, the, the elephant in the room that very, very few people do oh. the follow up after the networking event. Yeah. And really when every time they do that, they are literally leaving money on the table mm -hmm. by not doing the follow up or follow through. So one of the things that I do when I know I'm when I put in my calendar that I'm going to a networking event. So, you mm -hmm. know, maybe yeah. next Thursday, I've got a networking event in my calendar, then what I'm doing is I'm also putting in on Friday morning, White one speech. hour yeah. of follow-up time mm -hmm. to reach out to the people that I connected with and say, it was really nice to meet you yesterday at fill in the blank event. I have templates written for emails, text messages, and Facebook messages and LinkedIn messages. So I don't have to write this follow-up thing every time, totally fresh. I just, you know, yeah. insert their, you know, the, the networking event, Mm -hmm. insert what we talked about, you know, that I remember from them. So I have a CRM that when I get out to my car, I talk into the CRM and my phone and, and say, you know, here's who I met. Yeah. Here's what we talked about. Here's what I remember about them. So that way the next day I'm not trying to pull from memory because goodness knows the older I get, <laughs> right. the less reliable that memory is. Right. But I, I do put that follow up time in to, to reconnect with them and say, hey, I, I really enjoyed talking with you and I would love to go have coffee or a lunch or, you know, if, if you'd like to hop on a virtual coffee sometime, let's let's reconnect and see how we can help each other yeah. out. Yeah, I love that. I mean, it's simple stuff. And I think most of us know this, you know, that if it, it's not working, you have to look and, you know, increase the awareness, you have to look at yourself in the mirror and say, okay, what's not working about it, there's something that's not working. And, and I want, I want, you know, our listener to know that it's not it may it, it's not you it's the strategy behind you, you know, and, and that is one of the things that we say is, you know, like, Oh, what's wrong with me. It's not what's wrong with me. It's probably what's wrong with what I'm doing. And, you know, and I think that's super important. So, okay. So you, you uh, talk about the listener gift. I want, I want to hear a little bit about the listener gift. We know about the two ears and one mouth, but <laughs> what is the listener gift that, that uh, might be a strategy for people? Yeah. Well, as you were mentioning, oftentimes when people show up to networking events, they end up sitting there puking their product all mm -hmm. over everybody around them mm -hmm. or puking their service, you know, just literally all they can talk about is themselves and their, their product. <laughs> and so, you know, one of the, 
one of the reasons why my team got to be number one in number one in group growth and number three in, in group sales in the world was because I taught them to quit puking product everywhere. Yeah. You've got to, you've got to number one, make that connection. And number two, then create some curiosity so that people actually want to know more about you and more about what you do and what product you do have or what service you do have. So I ended up creating a little mini course for people. Mm -hmm. It takes less than 20 minutes to, to watch. It's a video course. And we also have some handouts that go along with it. So that way people can actually go through and create ways, like you said, create processes and systems, change the behavior, change the words that they're saying, change the way that they're thinking about networking to actually learn how to pitch themselves without puking product everywhere. So it's called the no product puking pitch mini course, <laughs> which is a bit of a mouthful to say. I know it is. It, it's like a Peter Piper, Piper picked a peck of pebble, whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, well, you know, when you put these things together, they're always like alliteration is so oh, great. Yeah, I'm it's like, really good. Not with really peas. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that that's, you know, something that's really important um, to do. What, what kind of results have your students had by just changing the mindset? You know, one, it's mindset. And then two, you know, and I always say mindset plus mechanics, it equals momentum. Um, but, you know, if we have to change that mindset and then we have to learn some mechanics on what questions to ask, how to be interested, you know, those types of things, what kind of results are people getting um, when working with you and changing this? Yeah. So my clients, depending on what their focus is, whether it's increasing sales, um, mm -hmm. knowing how to grow their their sales on a, a monthly or quarterly basis, are getting anywhere from 17 to 88% increases in their sales. I have other clients who their focus is like, well, I'm pretty much selling as much as I really personally can um, in my direct sales, network marketing, or MLM business. I'm at the point where I need to start growing a team. So I'm working with them on how to grow a team of other people who do what they do. And so I've had clients who have gone from two or three people on their team and then they are growing organically. And as they learn how to really have those types of conversations, because a recruiting conversation, you know, a sponsoring conversation, even right. one of those that different companies use different terminology um, is really the same as the same kind of conversation you're going to have about the product that you sell, whether it's skincare, lipstick, jewelry, whatever. It's just now you're having conversation, you're marketing and selling the business opportunity. And so what I've, my clients have ended up growing by 10 and 12 people in a month um, on their own personal team. And then we're working with them to help teach their team members to grow. So they're right. going from two and three people on their team to growing to 50, 75, 100 in their entire organization in, in the course of a year or two. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's great. So if someone's not in, you know, multi-level marketing, isn't in, uh, you know, my podcast, one of my podcasts is called Mortgage Lending Mastery, which is MLM, which is hilarious. Um, I didn't think about that when I put it together. <laughs> right? And it's been 10 years, so <laughs> I don't care anymore. But but yeah, we call it MLM inter internally, but, you know, and I have to remember what it stands for, for other people, but, you know, multi-level marketing, uh, network marketing, you know, where you're selling other people's stuff or affiliate marketing, um, those types of things. Um, what do you offer for people who aren't in any of those modalities, but are just a salesperson, you know, just says, look, I just want to enhance my sales skills. Um, can this no product, I, I can tell you it will help loan officers, it will help realtors, because that's all I hear. Um, but, uh, but no product, you know, puking, no product puking pitch mini, mini course, thank goodness it's written here for me. Um, you know, I feel like a lot of people need that in that industry too. And, uh, look, I, I think everybody needs it. Like I said, I get calls constantly of, I want to meet yeah. with you. And then it's just pitching me constantly. So it's regardless of product, it might be service pitching. What are you doing mm -hmm. for them? Or can they get involved with you? Or are you just honed in on direct sales? I do primarily work with people who are in direct sales, network marketing, and MLM. Mm -hmm. um, but every once in a while, if there is a good fit based on what they want to create in their life, because I, I don't 
exclude those people, but I do have a conversation because I know that there are other people out there. Um, I, I know that there are other coaches who are probably a better fit for realtors because that's a slightly different discussion um, than necessarily, you know, somebody who's selling jewelry or kitchen products or something of that nature. Um, but there are some, uh, what's interesting is there are some real estate companies that are starting to come out now and they are doing a network marketing and multi-level marketing model. Yeah, they are. So, yeah. yeah, several. Uh, I, Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So I've been having conversations with some of those types of companies to say, Hey, I've been helping, I've been helping people sell like lipstick, $50, you know, yeah. <laughs> 20, $50 at a time. It's the same process to increase sales, to, to grow it. How do you, how do you train them? How do you lead them? Mm -hmm. Um, because leadership in direct sales and network marketing is very different from the type of leadership that you are probably working on with people who are hiring because in the world of direct sales and network marketing, that leadership conversation is you're leading a volunteer army. They mm -hmm. don't have to do anything you say because they're not losing their job if they don't do right. anything. Now, they may not make as much money, their business may not grow as fast, but that's their choice, their business. Mm -hmm. So how do you lead a group of people who don't have to follow you? Yeah. When you can learn those leadership skills and, and get to the point where you've got people who don't have to follow you, but they choose to, that is where insane empires are built. Yeah. Is with those kinds of leaders who figure out how to, yeah. how to lead a volunteer army of people <laughs> who want the right. success that, the, that that leader is attaining. Right, 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 right. Yeah. I mean, like you said, it's all applicable. And I, I think, you know, for me in the context of what we're talking about, it, it has a lot to do with marketing. I mean, networking, because that, that is a type of sales, right? There's no question about it. Um, so it's sales yeah. mastery regardless of direct sales or whatever mm -hmm. it is, it's commission sales directory um, mastery. And I think that, you know, that's probably one of the biggest things that people are going to take from this particular podcast is, Hey, I, you know, I need to change the tune. If I'm going to meet more people, if I'm going to expand my business, regardless of what I do, I need to get better at being curious about other people and serving other people. And then I can talk to them about my product or my service, you know, when I have an opportunity later on, I think that's good for anybody in business because we all, nobody wants to be a skunk, oh, exactly. the one that everybody and, avoids. Yeah. And, and I think that when, when people do avoid the networking events, it's because they don't want to do those things, but they don't know what to do instead. I know. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know, and so there, there are plenty of podcasts out there. There are plenty of books out there. There are online courses out there. If people yeah. want to know how to get better at networking and, you know, frankly, there are organizations, I'm a part of one that literally includes education about how to network effectively mm -hmm. on a regular basis. I mean, it, I've been a member of this networking organization since 2011, and I uh, really yeah. attribute the education that they provided in, in my success, because yeah. otherwise I probably would have been that poker dealer at the networking event, getting out my card to as many different people as I possibly can. Yeah. And I yeah. learned not to do that through that. So there's, there is lots of education out there. People just have to choose to seek to educate themselves. Well, to want to improve networking. Yeah. And to want to improve yeah. themselves, you know, I think that's part of it too is, and, and anybody who's listening to a podcast is looking for that self-improvement. That's what I love about podcasters, you Absolutely. know, is, is that, you know, the others don't take the time. They never listen. They don't, they don't take the time to learn. And, you know, and I think that that that's super incredible. So um, obviously we uh, will have a link so that someone can take the class. And I, and I would encourage everybody, I, I don't, it doesn't matter what you do. I would encourage everyone to, to go and gra grab that class and we'll have that link in the notes. And then um, how do people get, well, get it directly in touch with you if they want to just have a conversation with you? Um, what's the best way? I know you're all over social, et cetera, but what is the best way? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. The best way is to go to talkwithjennyb.com. Uh, so that's talk with Jenny, J E N N I E B as in Bellinger.com. And they can book a time to have a quick chat. And if they, if they're like, Hey, this sounds like something I'd like to, to learn more about. That's a great way to get in touch with me. 
Yeah, I love that. Okay, what would you like to leave us with from a sales perspective, a sales quote, your mantra, what would you like to leave us with today? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> um, I, I, I think it really goes back to, to really put the other person first. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there are plenty of times when I had, uh, you know, jewelry clients come to me. Um, some of my best clients come to me and they said, you know, hey, I'm really looking for this particular style of jewelry or this. And I knew that my company didn't have it. I introduced them to people who were with other companies that I knew had, had that style of jewelry. I took care of what my customer wanted, even if it meant that I wasn't necessarily going to benefit from it. And that ended up coming back to me positively because then the next time they wanted, you know, some new jewelry for a wedding they were going to or whatever, they reached out to me and said, Hey, here's my outfit, pick something out, send me the bill. Cause right. you took right. care of me when I wanted a very specific thing. And when you, when you make your customer first, regardless, I mean, we all learned this from miracle on 34 or I'm sorry. Yeah. Miracle on 34 street when Santa Claus, recommended right. <laughs> the other store, right? right, right. Um, it, 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 that still is true today. Take care of the customer, what they need, and trust me, it will come back to you. Yeah. And hopefully, and hopefully the person you're sending them to remembers that and they send their customers back your way, right? That's, that's what this is all about. Yeah. And, you know, it's not missing that other part of that, you know, is yes, my customer will come back, but maybe the person I sent that business to, they will come to me for another reason, you know, or send a client to me. So I love that. Keep, make sure you put your customer first. So thank you so much, Jenny, for being with us um, here today. We absolutely loved, I loved it. I always learn something. I love that, you know, I, I love the, the listening, you know, the listening piece of it. And I, and I, <laughs> I mean, I say it all the time. I probably won't always say it. It's your line, but no product puking, presentation course, right? I don't know. <laughs> no yeah. product puking. So we appreciate you being here and I wish you all kinds of success. Thanks so much for taking time to be on our show. It means a lot to us. Oh, no, thank you very much for having me. I love these kinds of conversations and, and helping people really shift their thinking on sales and, and networking. Yep, that's exactly what it's all about. Thank you so much. And thank you for listening in and taking time out of your day to learn something new. Now go put it in action. If you have a networking event coming up or you're going to be doing something virtually, be sure that you're going there with the intent of serving the other person first. Put your customer first. Put those referral partners first and help them and have that. I love that you said insane curiosity to find out how you can serve them. And in doing so, you will be served as well. So with that, we'll catch you on the next episode. You've been listening to Success to Significance with Jen Duplessis, the number one podcast for people wanting to give more value and make an impact. Loved this episode? Be sure to subscribe right now at www.jenduplessis.com slash S2S for more stories, strategies, and thoughts to help you gain significance and success. And if you like what we're doing, don't forget to give us a rating and review so we can continue to bring you the best content possible. Join us next week for another breakthrough episode. Thank you for listening.